Dr. Jen here, and this is another episode of Women in Science. And today, I am here with Carla Vargas, a conservation geneticist, to talk about her research. So you work on mass bobwhites. Right. So what is a mass bobwhite, and where are they found? Uh, mass bobwhites, um, it's a subspecies of the northern bobwhite, or Codorniz Catuli in Spanish. Um, it's one of the species of the New World whales. And there are two captive populations of mass whites in the U.S. One is at the Buenos Aires National Wildlife Refuge in southern Arizona, and the other one is at the Sutton Avian uh, Research Center in Oklahoma. There's a third captive population in Puebla, Mexico. So it sounds like with all of these captive populations that the mass bobwhite is in danger. Um, is that true? It is. So the mass bobwhite is an endangered subspecies. Um, when it was first described in the 1860s, uh, it was described as a, as a new species of quail. And then a hundred years later, roughly a hundred years later, it was classified as endangered in the United States. And in the 1990s, it was classified as endangered in Mexico. The reason for the decline was loss of habitat. In the 1900s, it was introduction of livestock. Okay. So heavy grazing, in addition to drought in the area, decimated the population of mass bobwhites. Wow. Well, there's a ton of effort being placed into uh, uh, recovering this, this species back to its, its range. And so what makes this little quail so special that we're putting all of this effort into recovering the population? Well, um, it is special, for sure. Uh, like it said, it was first described as a separate species of northern bobwhite because there was a lot of overlap on vocalizations and plumage coloration, uh, you know, similar to other northern bobwhites. But then uh, it was reclassified as a subspecies. If you look at a female bobwhite, it looks very similar to other uh, northern bobwhites, but males are very distinctive. They have the black neck and head. It's very different from other northern bobwhites. So they are very special, they're very charismatic. And then um, genetic studies actually in the 2000s confirmed that they are genetically extremely differentiated from other, uh, from other um, subspecies of, of northern bobwhites. So um, the research that we're doing for the mass bobwhites um, attempts to add to the big question. So we have state agencies and federal agencies and non-for-profit conservation organizations and volunteers, a lot of people working towards answering the big question, which is how can we reestablish a self-sustaining population of mass bobwhites in the wild? And so my part is contributing to this big question from the genetics perspective. So first, we're trying to identify the closest living uh, population. Who is the closest relative to the mass of white? Uh, so we have several subspecies of bob whites living in Mexico. So we want to identify the closest relative. And then we want to look at the genetic diversity. We want to compare genetic diversity of the mass of whites in um, Arizona, in Sonora, to the, the mass of whites living in Mexico, to the closest relatives. And we also want to compare the genetic diversity of mass of whites that are living now in the captive populations to a few samples that we have of mass of whites that were living in the wild a uh, hundred years ago. So we want to see how that genetic diversity has changed over the years. They released about 450 last year and approximately 600 this year. And they were able to detect the presence of several families uh, this past winter. So that means the, the birds that were released last year did great. They survived through the winter, which is great news.
we know that we can recover the mask of white. So it makes you think that is it worth it, all the effort, all the hours, and it, it totally is.